Hi there, so I wanted to pop in here and share what I see um, as the top three mistakes spiritual coaches are making with their Instagram bios that really keeps them obscured from their soulmate clients being able to find them. And Hi there, so I wanted to pop in here and share what I see um, as the top three mistakes spiritual coaches are making with their Instagram bios that really keeps them obscured from their soulmate clients being able to find them. And one thing you can't afford to be online if you're building a business online is obscured. You have to be able to stand out um, for exactly who you serve and the results that you get. So I'm gonna just share with you the top three mistakes. The first one is if you look at your bio and it's just a laundry list of descriptions for you, then this is a problem. So this might look like meditation teacher, yoga teacher, energy healer, you know, um, coach, you know, that's even worse. That's even more general, right? Um, but if it's just descriptions of you and it just looks like a resume based on all of the different certifications that you've had, or all of the different things that you're interested in um, or passionate about, what that is doing is it's not letting them know that, that uh, you can help them with a specific problem, right? So you put yourself in your potential client's shoes. If they land on your profile, they wanna know that you can help them with what it is they're looking for, right? And so you have to get really specific on who you're here to serve and what you offer, right, as a transformation or what you offer people as a result. And so obviously you have to already know what that is. So this is really, you have to be really crystal clear on who you're here to serve and the transformation that you offer first right out the gate, but then your bio needs to reflect this. You can't have just a laundry list of labels. Labels do not identify um, the fact online that you can help anybody, right? It's So you wanna make sure that your Instagram bio does not look like a resume list um, and a long list of labels. It should say what is in it for them, right? Your bio should not be about you, it should be about them and what's in it for them. And so this brings me to the second mistake, which is your bio is too um, vague and too general. So you might say things like, I help women manifest the life they love, or I help people find their purpose, you know, or I help, like, it sounds sort of specific, but it's not, it's really general, right? So it's not a specific result. Um, and so a lot of times if you are attempting to describe your services, you're doing it in a way that is so general and so, you know, vague that it's like you're trying to please the masses with your bio. It's almost like you're trying to exclude no one from wanting to work with you, okay? So if this is you, then what I wanna say is it's time, you gotta reverse that. You wanna exclude as many people as possible from wanting to work with you. You want as many people to land on your bio and be like, she's not for me. She's not gonna be able to help me with my problem. Because that means you're specific. And that means the person that does land on you that has that problem and, ha and needs the result that you offer is gonna be like, hell yeah, she's my girl. But if you're trying to write your bio to be um, specific, or I mean, general enough to make, you know, to appeal to the masses, then you're really speaking to no one, right? So you want it to be more specific. You don't want to speak in general terms. And the more you do that, the more you will feel like you're excluding a lot of people as being a potential client. But the more you do that, the more you're going to be an exact match to your ideal client. And I want you to think about this for a second. If you could help anybody on the planet, because literally when you're on social media, you have access to the entire uh, global community, right? If you could help anybody on the planet right now, who would it be? 
And if you just say anyone, then I would say you have a lot of work to do on who it is that you're here to serve because I guarantee you if every different type of person across all different kind of problems and all different kind of, you know, results that they're looking for, you know, signed up with you, you wouldn't be lit up from the inside out working with all of them. Right? So let's just take something general, for example, like um, hypnotherapy or a mindfulness teacher or something like that. Like, let's say that these are some of the things that you, your gifts and things that you want to bring as value to someone. You're going to have way more joy and aliveness working with one type of client than working with another type of client. So your goal is not to try to make yourself appealing to everybody. Your goal is to get really specific with who you serve so that the only person that resonates with you is your soulmate client and everybody else is like, goes to somebody else, right? Because you want to attract your ideal dream soulmate clients because at the end of the day, that's what's going to feel most energetically aligned. That's what's going to keep you in energetic alignment. That's what's going to keep you happy and fulfilled in your business and sustaining yourself. And if you go too general and too vague because you have um, sort of like this lack mindset, because that's really what's happening here. There's like a lack mindset. Like if I don't cast a wide enough net, I'm not going to be able to, you know, sustain myself or I'm going to be turning potential clients away. That's actually, you know, you want to flip the script on that because there's more than enough people around that are benefiting from the very thing that you are being um, called to offer that really, really, really lights you up and the type of person that you really, really, really want to work with. There's more people on the planet that fit that criteria than you can handle. And so the idea is you don't go too vague and too general and try to appease the masses. If that's the case of what you're doing with your bio, then what you're really doing is you are not lighting up for your soulmate client and you're staying very obscured, which you don't wanna do. Which, which leads into the third mistake and the third mistake is you're often speaking to the process versus the results. And so speaking to the process might sound something like, I, I help women or men, whoever it is, right? Or children or whatever, um, or parents of children. You know, you wanna identify who it is that you're serving, but when it comes time to sharing what it is you actually do, you don't wanna speak to the process. You don't wanna say things like, I help you get to the root problems, uh, root causes of your, you know, belief systems through the process of healing your inner child, coming in, to eat, you know, coming into alignment holistically and blah, you know, this and that, like that's part of your process. That's what you're going to help them do, but that's not appealing to them as a result. And they don't care about the process as long as they get the result. They don't care how you're going to get them there. They just care that you can, right? And so this is where you obviously have to really be connected and in alignment with your own tr transformation and the transformation that you can offer others and be really confident in that. Um, but they don't care about how they're going to get there. They just care that they can get there. And more importantly, they care that you can help get them there. And if you're talking about the process, oftentimes you can also get stuck in doing a lot of coachy language with sometimes, especially if you're like a, a healer or something like that, talking to them about process processes that really they don't even know about or care about yet. They just, you know, they don't even know that that's what they need or like that's what's happening once they sign up with you. They just want to know the end result. And so the other reason it's really important to speak to the results is because the masculine energy in all of us is the one that takes action. That's the one that decides to purchase a mentor. That's the one that whips out their card to pay you. That's the one that takes action in general in life to move the needle forward, taking the action. Um, and the masculine wants results. 
right? And so when you speak to the results, you're speaking to the masculine energy, the one that is inclined to act on that. And so that's what I wanted to share with you today. If this resonates with you, then I have a couple of options for you right now. You can um, take the Soul Align Success Masterclass. Wherever you happen to be watching this video, you should find the link below. And currently, if you're following me on Instagram, there's a link in my bio um, at Spiritual CEO for a live event on October 7th. There won't be a replay and it's called Map Your Six Figure Soul Business Blueprint, where we're gonna dive deep into all of the pillars that are required for you to build an aligned business from start to finish that energetically is a magnetic match to your soulmate client. And we covered that on the strategy session as well. That's also available to you if you take the Soul Align Success Masterclass. So if you do take the Soul Align Success Masterclass, and that really resonates with you, you have an option to jump on a private strategy session with me. Um, so those are the options. If you're interested in any of that, check out the link in my bio or the links below this video, wherever you happen to be watching it. And I hope this video finds you.